So below me here I've got the core components of a Steffs gearbox, uh, very similar to a Hewland Mark V uh, and a design that's been around for a very long time um, and built on over time. So on the left hand side here I've got the pinion shaft uh, which has the reverse idler first gear, second gear, third, fourth and fifth as well as the dog rings that engage the various gears um, they go backwards and forwards and then over here I've got the lay shaft which has an integrated reverse gear and first gear as well as second, third, fourth and fifth uh, the gear sets are basically the same as a Hewland Mark V except for second gear which is ever so slightly shorter and can be ground down um, to fit if it's a Hewland Mark V gear in the middle here I've got the uh, differential, this one being a cam and pull uh, with the side plate attached and then the back cage uh, which is what ultimately selects your gears um, via these pins that go through the top side and there's just uh, three selector forks um, reverse first, second third and fourth fifth down the bottom uh, but the purpose of this video is just to do an exploded view of the cam and pull differential uh, just so something to show off really so the differential pulls off. You can see the, the output flange just through the middle there. There's two, um, there'll be two of them. Uh, the other right hand side will go in this side here. So that pulls off. Um, so this is the output flange that would be pushed in from both sides and what ultimately turns your drive shafts. Uh, this has been already sort of disassembled, so it's gonna come apart a lot easier than it would if it was already in the car. Uh, so the crown wheel comes off the side, but just to show, looks like that in a semi-exploded view. Um, the crown wheel attaches to the differential and the differential is what drives those output flanges. Uh, so this one just pops off uh, and put that over there. So now we're left with the differential just by itself. Again, partially disassembled. These two parts here would be in contact when it's in the car and so we'll take off the outer cage um, this component is just what holds it all together but it doesn't actually have any mechanics inside of it um, it's just a cage with a bearing uh, that would go into your side plate so here's the cam and pole uh, so this is the outer race uh, which is what drives the right hand side of the car uh, so the flange goes in there and then we have the where the poles uh, will drive against uh, and then sort of the inverse of it is what does the left hand side uh, so that pulls out the left hand side flange would be in here right hand goes over there and that leaves us with the uh, the pole carrier is what fill, will fill the gap here and that's what I've got just below so the pole gar pole carrier is what has the chiclets or poles or whatever you want to call them um, they're just little metal rectangles uh, this gearbox has had a hard life so it's not a idea of what they should look like um, and they will be replaced but there's eight of them just sitting in the pole carrier around here with the outer and inner races um, driving against one another uh, the drive comes from the ball carrier which is attached to the crown wheel um, and so when I turn it on its side all these drop out and so under drive these metal rectangles um, hook up against the gears and is what drives the wheels but when there's no drive the pins can move freely in and out and ride over the um, the surface there and that's what gives you an open diff and then under load it catches on the edges of both the inner and outer and locks it up um, to give you lock out of the corners uh, the only downside is that if you apply mid corner throttle it goes to full lock and so the car will tend to put, be pushy in the corners if you're not driving to the differential you've got installed in the car so assembly is really simple compared to any other differential uh, out there it's just a matter of putting those pins back in this box has actually got some damage on the pole carrier 
Uh, there's just some cracks that can be seen here just because of how thin the metal is around there and the age of the part. And we're missing one that goes in there. And so now if I turn that, you can see all them popping in and out. And then the out of carrier goes on. And so it's locking at the moment. There we go. So you can see it. It's just acting like an open diff at the moment, spinning opposite ways as it rides up on the ridges and uh, ends up turning it. But then under hard lock or drive from the um, carrier, it, it locks up. So yeah, that's a cam pull differential. Very simple to put together. Goes on like that. And then you'd attach the crown wheel, bolt all that together, and that would be your racing differential for a Formula Atlantic.